lovely humans. This is Riki from Riki Like Magic and she says hi. So, um, pretty intense title of this video, <laughs> but quite true. If you've been following kind of my journey uh, speaking about mental health and my life and my struggles with my mental health and what's helped me with my mental health, then I thought it was important. I always think it's really important to be extremely honest and forthright and transparent when it comes to specifics about what's going on in your head and your emotions and stuff like that because I've kind of noticed this trend now that mental health is quite a hot topic. There is, in my opinion, this trend of people speaking from a place that does not remember the pain that they've been through. So when people are talking about when they had a hard time or dark times, it's from this place of like, don't worry, the darkest day is just before the dawn and you'll be okay. And all you have to do is talk to people and believe in yourself or like, and understand that this will pass. And while that is semi good advice, it's like a tiny, tiny part of the bigger picture. And it has also become cliched in my opinion. People are over stating these things and diminishing and minimizing these things as well. Like I wouldn't say I've had the worst of the worst in terms of breakdowns, but I also would be extremely frustrated if someone in my darkest time, and which I've kind of discussed in previous videos, if someone had gone, don't worry, uh, you'll see that this is just a growth opportunity and you'll be stronger for it on the other end. Like, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> like, that's not helpful when things are horrible and there feels like there's no escape. It's not helpful in any way. And so this channel, I just kind of want to always reiterate that I'm trying to be as transparent and honest and specific as possible in case that specificity helps somebody um, kind of connect and realize that there are symptoms and realize that there are patterns. And maybe the more we realize about, about ourselves and the more we acknowledge about our strengths and weaknesses, the more choice we have to get better or not. Because you are who you choose to be. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get started. Basically, I, in my journey through therapy and trying to change my intense anxiety issues or kind of live with them or manage them, I um, have discovered about myself that I have a core belief that I think I am worthless and I am unlovable and I am not good enough and I never will be good enough. I want to say as well that this video, I assure you, is speaking from a place not of pity. I'm not doing this to have people be like, you are good enough, <laughs> like, because I'm also really on my way to healing now. It's not quite there yet, but the wound that I have is, or the core belief that I have that has been self-destructive my whole life is really kind of healing and diminishing. So I now I feel like I'm strong enough to talk about it because I don't like when people uh, moan and cry on camera about their issues without kind of offering something that can be helpful or um, eye-opening. So hopefully this video will be that. So first and foremost, um, I will say that this, it's an interesting thing, core beliefs, because this is how I saw all of this stuff, is for some reason, like no matter how many times my friends, my family, my loved ones, my teachers, my mentors, would say the things back at me that I've achieved, the things that I've done, the, th the ways that, that I've made them feel, the ways that I've loved others. On paper, I am good enough. <laughs> rationally, on paper, I am good enough. And then this is the thing though, is that rationally I could see all that and it felt like it lived up here. Like rationally, yes, in my head, if I wrote it down, I could totally see what you mean. Of course I am, of course I am. But for some reason, I would never feel it in my gut or it, it didn't live down here where your kind of spirit lives. It wasn't there. I really, there was too much self-doubt. There was this ginormous voice. Like it felt like it was bigger than the world that would scream at me time and time again, you're awful, you're awful, you're terrible, you're a piece of crap. You can't do this, you can't do this. You're a terrible person. From my understanding, 
core beliefs are something that you develop when you're very, very young and you kind of hold on to them for your whole life. They define who you are for your whole life, unless you find out what they are and try and change them. So I have something intrinsic in my behavior and pattern as a human that anything that I, anything that I do up until this point has been an unconscious expression of the belief that I am not good enough. So that's what was really disturbing and frustrating to me, realizing that I had been living out this pattern without fecking knowing it. And it was so awful that I was like, you mean I've just been doing this because I thought it was normal. And it was my normal, it is my normal. The only reason why I can change it now is because I had this really weird feeling this was before I melted um, and had the event. I had this really weird feeling that I was getting in my own way. There was a lot of things that I was very unhappy about in my life. And even though I was high achieving, I was technically successful. I am technically successful. I'm a nice person and uh, I had lovely friendships but there was always something that I wasn't happy about. The, and then the more I kind of tried and tried and tried to fix things, the worse things would get. And then I, because it was, because I realized now that it wasn't coming from a, um, a constructive place, it was coming from a self-destructive place. And the last couple of years I was thinking, I'm getting in my own way. I have a feeling I'm getting in my own way. I think I'm putting up obstacles for myself that I'm not quite aware of. And uh, that's definitely something that I wanted to tackle in therapy. So in this video, I wanted to talk about how the core belief of worthlessness has manifested itself in my life. So my patterns of behavior that I developed through this thinking that I'm not good enough, I'm never good enough, I will never be good enough feeling and how that progressed in my life. And then I'll talk about because of the work that I've done on myself, what has changed in my life now. So hopefully to let you guys know what's possible. Yeah. So how they would manifest is I would have serious problems in groups. I still have serious problems in groups of people. And that's mainly because I developed a habit of performing for everyone that I was around. So while I'm, I pretty much performed a version of myself, I didn't like fake too much, but I would over exemplify parts of my personality or over exaggerate parts of my personality uh, for different people. And that uh, that was getting really bad up to last year because I found hanging out with anyone exhausting, like even one person exhausting, I would need like the whole rest of the day to recover because I, out of force of habit and almost completely unconsciously was just pandering to their needs or saying what I think they wanted me to say, not disclosing my own own opinions or anything like that um, because I was like they must like me that was a big thing that's manifested in my whole life is they must like me because if they like me then maybe I'm good enough if they like me then maybe I am lovable so if everybody likes me then maybe I'll be okay maybe I can survive it really feels like life or death so sometimes it gets so bad that it feels like life or death. So you just want to be liked and you want to um, people to think that you're kind and people to think that you're good so that maybe if enough people say that, then it would be true. But then that would flip extremely harshly and intensely when one person, any person, doesn't matter who they are, doesn't matter if I know them, but if they are not happy with something about me or something about my behavior, then it was like, into land of depression and I mean self-doubt isn't the word for it it was just way more extreme than that it was self-loathing like instant self-loathing if anyone wasn't happy with me or not even me just my behavior if I did something wrong or if I did something somebody like found annoying even I would just be like I am a horrible person I am awful I don't need and saying all this out loud really sounds pitiful. It really sounds pitiful. So I can imagine people who don't suffer from this listening to this and being like, what in God's name? <laughs> like, if you don't know what this feels like, I really hope you can be empath. Well, I really hope you can be compassionate and realize that this happens and this is happening in people in in so many people's minds. Like, and you are blessed if you do not have this issue. You're so lucky if you don't care what other people think. Like, I 
on the whole, you know, because I, it sounds really pitiful. It sounds like I just lived my life for other people, but I was, I was living my life for other people. And thankfully I still, I want to keep living pretty much a life that I was living. So I was on the right track. I was just coming from a really bad place. I was coming from a place of fear and shame and living my life that way rather than from self-acceptance and um, love. Anything that I achieved, I couldn't, enjoy because I didn't think I deserved it and it's horrible so I know it sounds really like ugh. you don't want to hang around with with someone with my problems if I tell you my problems but people don't talk about this stuff people don't talk about just how pathetic we can be and I want to share that these were my issues like I'm not talking about weekly like every day every, almost every hour of every day I would have thoughts like this um and they still rear their ugly head but it's a lot better now so much better yeah I'll talk about that in a second but uh, another thing is imposter syndrome I heartily heartily have or had, or maybe have, anything that I would walk into, anything that I would try my hand at, I feel like I'm waiting for someone to catch me out and find out that I don't belong there. I also feel like I don't belong in a lot of places, which is kind of partly true because I'm very strange and also comes from inside of me as well, me telling myself I don't belong there. I would hang around with the wrong people and that means, for me, that meant hanging around people who I tried to fix all the time or I became like, like their agony aunt or I became the person that they went to for advice and not the person that they were mutually helping. I, in the same thread, by the same token, was attracted to really broken men <laughs> um, romantically because I thought I could fix them, first of all, and also I had a really perverse problem with them i i felt if i'm not as messed up as them that would make me feel better <laughs> uh, um i had really awful patterns and unconscious reasons for doing things so um and i think the best thing that you can do is to acknowledge that you had these patterns and then try and change them as quickly as possible which is what i'm doing the things that your problems and issues manifest into in terms of your behavior can really really hurt other people so that's a huge reason why i would encourage everyone to take a good hard look at themselves if you're brave enough because um, you can really, really mess other people up if you don't have your own stuff together or if you're not self-aware. Other things, i uh, deathly afraid of confrontation and really bad with confrontation. So even when I would confront somebody, I would do it very ineffectively and manipulatively. That was another thing, I was very emotionally manipulative because I didn't know how to ask for what I wanted because I didn't think I deserved what I wanted. So I would just try and like worm my way into getting what I wanted and that didn't happen very often but whenever I did really really need or want something it wasn't done in a clear kind way it was sneaky in my own way which I really didn't like about myself either but again uh, forgiveness is really important of yourself because when when you understand the darkness that all of this comes from you know it's really hard to control like I can barely control it now I've just had to build new voices like stronger parts of me that it's like no you know where this comes from you know why you're like this and we're still gonna do this thing do you know that takes a lot of time <laughs> that takes a lot of time finally i how it manifested me was i was really afraid of success i've talked about this before i have a video called i am afraid of success and i kind of didn't understand it even when i was talking about it in that video but any time i'd get kind of a surge in professional career acceptance or acknowledgement or recognition i would freak out and it would be awful and i'd be working i was technically working towards this kind of recognition and then it never felt good ever it felt really scary but i I think I attribute that now to imposter syndrome like oh no this is more people to find out that I am not that I'm just like not good at my job but that I am a piece of <laughs> like that's I think that's where it came from that I was so so scared of like there's more people looking at me now there's more people that I need to impress there's more people that I need to prove myself to there's more people that I need to make love me 
and that made me really scared because it's exhausting and impossible so like when you're looking at an impossible task like that of course you're going to be afraid so I was really afraid of success so yeah so what I wanted to move on to then is ways that I have changed in my life which I've kind of said a little bit here anyway uh, in amongst all of this Mm. So I'm reading my notes again. <laughs> now I have less of those thoughts telling myself I am terrible, which is if you've never had those thoughts, then you don't understand just what a victory that is. Like only every now and again, when something really, really affects me and hits right into, you know, my problems, only then now do I get those terrible thoughts about myself, but they used to just be constant. They used to just be every day, every minute. So now because of that, another thing that has changed is I do more things that scare me because I am not as scared all the time if that makes sense so because I was terrified all the time I was in a state of anxiety and panic and existential doom and fear all the time I just kind of cocooned myself and kept myself small and kept myself comfortable and safe because I felt unsafe all the time so now I feel way more safe just in like my kind of worthiness to live on this planet that I do more things now that scare me which in turn builds up my confidence in any sort of in my relationships with other people in in my career in you know like doing outdoor adventure stuff I'm a little bit more together which feels really nice I think I trust myself more as well it's another thing I really trust myself that I know that I can deal with it no matter what it is mm, I'm still not there yet again but I know I trust myself a lot more <laughs> than I did <laughs> I forgive myself more quickly and I rec my recovery time is much quicker from a triggering event so something that really really pains me and really hits on all of my stuff I have have my recovery you know like it used to I used to be in a state for about two three five seven days and I would have to really take care of myself for those days or like not see anybody or watch a ton of tv or just like really minimize and now my recovery time is much quicker so even with sometimes within hours I'm just like no you're fine uh, you can breathe and you can calm down which is amazing because I I, I can live my life more <laughs> just so nice and um I love more easily by that I mean the people who I love receive my love so much more now because I have the space and the strength to do that you know and I'm not giving a lot of energy to people who don't necessarily appreciate my attention so I don't give that as much to these people and instead I give it to the people I want to I can meet up with people more often because even seeing one person a week was so exhausting for me. <laughs> I can recognize the reasons I feel awful much more quickly. So I would attribute that to meditation though because meditation really taught me how to hear my thoughts or like see what... So you know the way you'd wake up, sometimes you can wake up with just a pit in your stomach or total anxiety and you're just anxious immediately. So you kind of go, nothing can have triggered that I just feel like this. Well, in my experience, I'm not saying this is this for everyone, but I have a theory that I think that it all comes from a thought, a teeny tiny thought that you may have had and it's so quick that you can't, you didn't grab onto it or you didn't hear it. So then you just feel awful for the rest of the day and you don't know why. But in my experience, if I think or if I listen if I listen if I listen and listen and listen and go no seriously this is coming from somewhere because it's not going away sometimes it can be like the most ridiculous thought like it can just be like my friend gave me a, a neutral look rather than a smile and now I think they hate me and I, that is not me making that up I have thought that before I've thought that thought before where I'm like they looked at me funny which they didn't you've just decided that they looked at you funny and now they must hate me it's like this making up this mental story so now I can recognize that's why I'm feeling awful is because I'm actually thinking about that without even realizing that I'm thinking about that. Matt. I'll fly through these, I think. Um, I am able to work more. I am able to say no more. I am able to say yes more to things that I actually want to do because I have more energy. And I'm getting quite good at recognizing these symptoms in others, which is kind of weird because I know most of the time they're not recognizing it in themselves. But yeah, it kind of feels... Uh, I have noticed a lot of us are going through this, consciously or unconsciously. So that's kind of why I want to talk about it as well. So yeah, I'll just leave it there. I do want to say that if you have any deep set like in your template, in, in like the foundation of your being, uh, core beliefs that you may know about yourself or you may want to find out about yourself or you may want to change about yourself, I will say that they are changeable. 
they are changeable. I am on the way to changing mine. However, it takes so much time and it is more painful than you can imagine. <laughs> ah! So then I understand why people don't go there and just live the life that they live kind of semi-happy, semi-not, or kind of not feeling anything at all because they're trying to just fortress and protect themselves for the rest of their life. Uh, but I understand because looking at yourself and looking at the worst parts of yourself is extremely difficult. I will say though, on the other side of this or through the murky sewage filled tunnel to the bits of light at the end, I am more free than I've ever been. And I can feel myself becoming more and more free. I never thought of myself as a political person or a philosophical person, but I think at the root of everything, choice always comes into it. Free will and choice always comes into it. And there's so many debates about what free will is and if it exists and choice and things like that. But through my own lived experience, you have choice. And if I don't have choice, I don't have anything. And I really, like that would be kind of my religion. <laughs> That's why I say what I say at the end of every video. It's much bigger than a sound bite like that. You are who you choose to be. But if I don't have choice, I have nothing. So I was living this pattern of existence that I did not choose to live. It was embedded in me. It was learned by me when I was vulnerable and innocent. And I sponged it in and just went, okay, I'll do this then. But I didn't even say, okay, I'll do this. And it wasn't a choice. It wasn't a choice. And I think that choice and choosing your path is probably the most powerful thing anyone can do. And to quote Brene Brown, she says that living a life of vulnerability is, it doesn't feel good a lot of the time, but it gives you a sense of battle fatigue mixed with a quiet sense of freedom is what she says which I will forever remember because that's exactly how this feels it feels like I have been through battle but I have a quiet sense of self and freedom and choice and clarity that I think is more powerful than just going along your life and living a narrative that you didn't necessarily buy in for but you you did it anyway because you didn't know any better, you know? But then when we're grown up, we have the choice. We have the choice to do what we want. We have the choice to live the stories that we want, to, like to make up our own story, you know? Yeah, anyway. Oh, thank you for listening. This got like even more deep than it normally gets. <laughs> Cause yeah, I think, about, I think about life a lot and those are some of my thoughts. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, you can like, you can subscribe, you can ring the little bell that gives you all the notifications. You can share it with your friends and you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Remember, you are who you choose to be and you are part of something bigger and deeper and more mysterious than you think. <laughs>